<laughs> I just got back from the chemo center. Forgot I had this on. I go to the chemo center every week. My blood work or chemo or something, but for some reason I have to go to the chemo center every week. What that means is no matter how good I feel, no matter how many wins in the week I have, no matter how much work I do to separate myself from the fact that I have a terminal disease, <laughs> doesn't matter because every week I have to walk back in there and look around at all the very, very sick, dying people. And your empathy for them is really hard, right? Because I'm the type of person that likes solutions. I see a problem, I want to solve it. And so when I see people hurting and sick and, and I, I, I want to help. <laughs> and you can't. And then of course I'm reminded of myself in this situation, having memories of having been that sick. And seeing my future. So needless to say, it's really hard. I don't know what's happening with my body right now. I mean, it's it's doing really well. But I still have stage four cancer and I am still dying. So I wanted to share because I think uh, I was reminded of this when I was leaving the hospital today, my one of my nephews uh, called me. He wanted to talk about uh, homelessness and uh, are homeless people all scammers and should you not uh, trust them and not contribute to them? And, and, uh, and what was my opinion, right? Well, I have an opinion. Um, in my opinion, I, uh, don't ever want to miss a person in need, judging the fact that of why they need something and then not helping them. Um, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> or, I don't wanna judge why they need help. Sure, maybe they're a drug addict. Maybe they're an alcoholic. Maybe they have mental problems. Maybe, COVID happened and they lost their fucking house. Like, I don't know. And I don't wanna think about that. So in my opinion, and I know, <laughs> I know that they're scammers. Of course they're scammers. You know, when I, I don't know, I was telling my nephew this story. I moved to Arizona and I was fresh off the farm is what I call it, right? And uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, Phoenix, it was like big city to me. Um, working at a restaurant in, uh, in Scottsdale, rich, uh, rich people's area. And I have never seen wealth like this. Uh, so rich people's area, right? Um, anyways, I'm working as a waitress and a young girl, like six years old, six, seven years old, comes in and asks if she can use the bathroom. Everyone's like, no, 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 no. I'm like, of course you can. Like, come on, people. So I take this little girl into the bathroom and I notice that like she's she's dirty. So I'm thinking, well, I don't think anything of it. I like, here, let me help you wash your hands and face. And would you like a glass of water? Because it's Arizona and you obviously have been outside a lot, right? Okay, great. Help her out. Where's your mom? She leaves. I, I, you know, I'm still, and my coworkers are like, Nicole, she's a scammer. Put her mom out there, right? So I look out the window. And there's her mom in the middle of the intersection. And sure enough, the little girl gets to her 
and her mom bends down and she picks up dirt and she rubs it back on her. Okay. Sure. Her mom is using her to make people feel bad and okay. Maybe she's scamming. Maybe she's desperate and she knows that that helps. I don't know. I don't care. I want to approach the world with compassion and empathy. And so that's how I choose to look at it. The homeless people in Chicago, it crushes me. It crushes me that I have lived here long enough that I can walk down a street and there is someone in desperate need laying on the sidewalk and I will just step over them. <laughs> Think about that sometimes. How will you have, like, I get it, I get it. It's like people that live in California, right? You really can't think about the fact that it's gonna fall off the face of the earth or drive you crazy. I, I... So anyways, what got me thinking in this conversation with my nephew is, it's all about your approach, right? I've been telling that kid that since he was little because he's a feisty young man, very much like his aunt. It's all about your approach. You can choose to look at life one way or another. When I was diagnosed with cancer, mind you, I had just spent the last couple of years being a caretaker to two people that had very recently died of cancer. So I knew what my future was. I still know what my future has to hold. That's why it's really hard to walk in that chemo center. But after the initial shock, I decided Sorry about that. Doctor called while we were chatting, so I used the opportunity to finish off my lunch and move on out to my front room because there's lots of sun here and this is a heavy conversation. This kind of goes to what I was what I'm gonna talk about too. So I'm diagnosed. When I was diagnosed with cancer. I never thought I would do chemo. I was actually very firm in that uh, thought. <laughs> but my wife said, please, please try. Thank God you did, I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> but I told her, okay, I'm in this. I'll give it everything I got. I have one request. We have to do it through a lens of joy. I cannot spend the last time I have here on earth being miserable, angry, and sad. I just can't. Nor do I want to do it in pain, but that's a whole other conversation. So I said, we have to find a way to every day find something that makes us smile. And we have to do it through humor. We have to do it through the lens of joy. And then I'm in, I'm in with both feet. I'm in, throw it at me, I'm ready. But I cannot do this. Because I made a decision as a young adult coming out of a, a childhood that was full of a lot of trauma. Um, you know, our parents hadn't figured out how to adult yet, let alone a uh, parent. And um, I made a decision that uh, um, I was not gonna spend my entire life angry. And because believe me, I was a raging teenager. Um, but it takes a lot of work. I have so many people that tell me I'm, I'm just in awe of your approach to this. 
uh, you seem so happy. And yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> because it's very intentional. It's very focused. And there's a lot of work that goes into it. I went to the chemo center. It's obviously very, very hard, right? So my morning to go to the chemo center to get myself ready is I do research and I find uh, a bakery in Chicago. Uh, I went to one that is on, um, that was Northwest. I will put the uh, link in the description. Uh, supposedly the best donuts uh, in Chicago, we'll see. But I went and I, and I ordered the uh, like 6,000 donuts so that I could take donuts to uh, the security that says hello to me, to the people that clean up, to my nurses, all of these things, because I'm the jolly donut person. So it makes it fun. It's fun for me, it's fun for them, right? So when I get to the chemo center, when I'm hit with all of the emotions of walking into that center, I've got donuts in my hand and people are smiling at me and, and I'm accepting that. I put earphones in. Uh, I choose a great playlist to make sure that I can listen to that so that I am not overwhelmed by sadness listening to people crying and moaning and conversations that are not for me. So I put earphones in, right? I layer. It's a lot of work to choose, <laughs> choose to look at things through rose-colored glasses, but it's so worth it. I cannot imagine having spent the last two years stuck in my pain and anger at what? That I have cancer? Do not think that I'm really fucking bummed I have cancer. Do not think that I cry myself in the middle of the night that I watch my wife sleeping, crying, thinking about how sad she's going to be when she's all alone. And she, you know, yeah, this is heavy stuff. And I allow myself to do that. And I allow myself to feel those feelings. My human school teacher, so, so happy if she saw this. <laughs> because I have to allow myself feel that and let go of it because I don't want to waste my time here and it's not easy it's a lot of work but I choose to look at life through a lens of joy just like coming home from the chemo center I start to cook because that's how I work how I process so I'm doing that as self-care the conversation got heavy, I recognized it. I took a moment to move out here and, and be in the, the light. And shortly, I'm going to go and take my wife into the middle of the woods and walk around for a little bit and breathe. It's all layers. And sometimes I get stuck longer, sometimes shorter. It's worth it. So how am I so happy when I know I'm dying? And how do I not get stuck in that fear and that sadness? <sighs> one minute, one step, one day at a time. Break it down, people. You just gotta get through this next minute and then the next minute. <laughs> I always say life unfolds as it should. And I really believe it. Sometimes I don't understand it, but I really believe it. I had a childhood full of trauma. You know what? The skill set that I developed has been the thing that has saved me. <laughs> so life unfolds as it should, people. Don't question it. Don't get stuck in things that you can't answer. Just be choiceful. It's all about your approach. I'm going to make the best of the time I have left. Now i got to go add another layer on. Kind 
Lesson the sadness.